this is Gina. On this particular video, we are going to open the bargain bead box. I'm not going to go through it thoroughly. I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the box. And then we're going to make these two necklaces. I find that it is difficult to put them all on one video anymore because some of the tutorials take a lot more time than others and the video becomes very long. So in this one, which I'm calling part one, we will be making these two necklaces. There will then be a couple more videos to follow, so stay tuned. Let's go ahead and start this video. Hi everyone, this is Gina. This is the December Bargain Bead Box. I did not get mine until like the 23rd of this month. So with Christmas and everything, there was quite a delay in getting this going. So what I've decided to do this time is give you a little bit of an idea about the box and where you can get it and then I'm just going to kind of lay it out, give an overall view of it and then we'll make some pieces because I'm sure by now everybody has either gotten their boxes and gone through them or they have seen an unboxing already on YouTube because there's a million of them. There's a lot of tutorials out there now too. So what I've decided, since it seems to work best for me to make pieces out of this, then I'm going to focus on that more today. So this is, like I said, the month of December, and it is a, the theme is a serene blend of blue and silver with a hint, hint of festive sparkle. So... You can get yours at bargainbeadbox.com. Use the code GGC2 and you will get $2 off your first box. They are like $17.95 a month, which is a really great bargain. And there is also a sister store. It comes with this piece of paper and it gives you a coupon for the sister store so that you can get stuff discounted there. There's also contests that you can put your creations in. And then there is a key on the back. Each bag is numbered. And then the key shows you exactly what each number on the bag is so that you can go through and see what you have and also get more if you would like at the sister store. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and I will lay it out and okay, we'll be so back. Okay, so here's the basic overview. We got some really nice big chandelier components to work with. These two packages here, nice big chandelier components. There's some chain, bead caps, spacers, and some charms. We got some really pretty little charms here, some snowflakes, and some pretty spacer beads here. Or actually, they're pretty good sized metal beads, probably about six millimeter. We've got some toggle clasps and some ball head pins. We've also got some pretty little crystal components here a, a large crystal, some stars, and this is a really pretty cut star. Um, it looks like a check bead, and some bicones and some rondelles. Then over here in the gemstone section, We've got some <clears throat> lapis and some jasper and some agate, some matte agate, um, or that's the jasper, that's the matte agate. We've got some goldstone, and usually this blue goldstone is um, eh, open. Is really sparkly and pretty. Let's see. Yes, this has a nice sparkle to it. Let me get you close. I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not, but it has nice little glitter look to it. And then we got this really pretty um, lapis pendant. This is really pretty, the star cut, really pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and lay out a design or two and put them together and show you what you can make with this month's box. Like I said, that was a brief showing, but um, I'd rather spend time actually making things. Okay, so I have an idea for this big chandelier component. In all honesty, I'm getting kind of tired of these big chandelier components because there's only so much you can do with them. I mean, you can use all kinds of different beads. The possibilities are endless as far as that, but the basic styles are pretty much the same. I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to um, 
put a tassel on this middle one, I think, and some dangles on either side, and then just do some looped um, of the lapis beads up on the top as a chain. So you're going to need your big component. I have a jump ring on mine. <laughs> I was messing with it. I'll take that off. But you're going to need your big metal component. And then you're going to need, for the very first part, I'm just going to show you the first thing we're going to do. We're going to make the tassel. So for the very first tassel, you're going to want two 8 seed beads and some 11 seed beads, just a little pile of 11 O's. I am using Toho nickel plate. And then you're going to want one of your metal beads. You're going to want a nice heavy gauge jump ring. This is about an eight millimeter in diameter and it's a nice heavy gauge jump ring so that when you close it, it will stay closed nicely. If you have a real thin jump ring, sometimes those like to just wiggle their way open. And then we're going to use the very small lapis beads that came in the box. And we're going to use some fire line. I'm using eight pound in the smoke color and I'm using a size 10 English beading needle and I've put about two and a half feet of thread onto of the fire line onto my needle. And what we're going to do is we're first going to start with, I'm going to move some of this other stuff. I will show you what I'm going to use for the rest too, but we're just going to start with a tassel. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up our jump ring. You want to make sure your jump ring is very tightly closed. So I closed my jump ring, making sure these heavy gauge ones usually close pretty tightly. Make sure it's nice and closed. You can't see any opening whatsoever or your thread will fall through it. Then we're going to take the end of our thread so I've got fire line on my needle. I'm going to take the opposite end, the tail end, and I'm going to tie my thread onto this jump ring, trying to make sure that I'm not tying it where the opening of the jump ring is. So I'm just going to tie an overhand knot. And once I pull it down, I'm just going to move this jump ring or move the thread so that the opening of my jump ring is here and my thread is down here. And it's going to wobble around a little bit and we'll have to readjust that a couple times. We just want to keep the thread away from the opening. And then I'm just going to tie one more knot, making sure that the thread is tightly on here. And then adjust again, making sure that you're not by the opening. My opening is up here. So I'm on the opposite side. Now I am going to pick up an 8 seed bead, the metal bead, and another 8 seed bead on the other side of it, just like this. And I'm going to drop this down to the knot that I tied onto the jump ring. Then I'm going to pick up three 11 seed beads. And then I'm going to pick up eight of the lapis little crystals here, the little rondelles. So I will pick up eight of these. There's four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I will pick up another 11 O. So I have three 11 O's, eight of my rondelles and one 11 O on the end. I am then going to pass the 11 O seed beads. So I'm just going to go around it and go into all of the beads above it. So all of the lapis, all of the 11 O's, the 8 O, the big rondelle metal bead, and into the 8 O above it, like this. And then I'm going to pull my thread through. Then I am going to go into the jump ring. And then I am going to pass back through the 8 O and the metal bead and the 8 -o. Let me adjust here so you can see me a little better. So I've gone through the jump ring. I'm now going through the 8 -o, the metal bead, and the 8 -o beneath it. Now if you find that you have any slack, you can always pull on the very end of the 11 -o here and then pull on your thread and that will adjust your slack in your line. This is what you should have, just like this. 
no matter how I adjust, I just can't stay in camera. There we go. Now, I'm going to pick up three 11 o seed beads. And again, I'm going to pick up eight of my rondelles. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and an 11 o. And then I'm going to drop this down to my piece, just like that. And again, I will go around the 11 o. Make sure you have it counted correctly or your things will be off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, I have eight. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. Then I'm going to go around the 11 o all the way back through all of these beads. Don't miss any. Then go into the 11 o's above the lapis and then into the 8 o into the metal bead and then into the 8 o above it. You can also go into the jump ring if you'd like. Just like that. Now that you're into the jump ring, make sure all your threads are nice and tight or you'll have a funny looking thing. You can take your bottom 11 o like that pull it and then pull up on your thread. And then we're coming through the jump ring, so all we have to do is go into the 8 the metal bead, and the 8 beneath it. And we're going to do that until we have four of these little strands all together. When we have four, we'll come back and I will show you how to tie this off. So just continue, make two more of these little dangles. Okay, so as you can see, I have made all four of my dangles. And what I'm going to do is just adjust my thread, make sure everything looks good. And then just kind of make sure there's enough slack in between too. Just kind of tug on a little bit. Don't mess your thread all up. But just enough to where you have a little bit of movement, kind of move them around and get them to where they're not really, really stiff. And they lay nice and they look pretty. And then I have just come all the way up my last strand and I'm coming out of this 8 o seed bead. I'm going to go around the jump ring and back into the 8 o the metal bead, and the 8 o beneath it. Now at this point it takes a little bit of manipulating, so just go slow and easy. My main problem is my jump ring's in the way, so let me just pull my needle through there. And then I'm going to go into this 8 o and this metal bead, and then part the little tassels beneath here and go straight through the bottom of this 8 o it may take a little manipulation, but it can be done. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we just want to kind of go around this center 8 o here. Let me readjust my thread on my needle here so I don't have a double. So what I've done is I've just gone around it. What I'm doing is I'm making a loop around the bottom of this 8 o Then I'm going to go through that loop and I'm going to manipulate this to where my thread will tie a knot right between the 8 o and the tassels. Right here. See how I pulled that down and my knot is just nowhere to be seen. So it's tied around all of the tassels here. And then I just want to make sure it's nice and neat. Pull on it, make sure it's tight. And then I'm just going to go down into one of these tassels all the way down. I move this little 11 0 out of my way. I'll go through that 11 0. And then I'm just going to do that again. I'm just going to make a circle around the 11 o seed bead here. Bring my thread around it. Draw it down. Making sure to guide it just between that 11 o and that 
lapis bead and then I'm just going to go back up into the lapis. I'm just going to go up a few of them. You can go all the way up if you'd like, but I'm not going to. And then I'm going to take my thread zapper. You can use a pair of scissors, just make sure you get very close. And I'm just going to cut off that thread. And then I'm going to go to this top one here. And I'm going to cut it off. And I hope I was in camera to do that, but that's what that should look like. Now you have a cute little um, tassel. I'm just going to make sure that I don't have a big mess here. There. Cut that a little closer. And that's what that looks like. It's kind of cute. Then we're going to, let me take this weird jump ring I have on here. Oh. I was messing around kind of looking at things and seeing what I wanted to put on here and evidently I left a jump ring on my big component here. So let me get that off. Okay, which I'm going to put another one back on. However, I don't want that one. So now I'm going to get a small jump ring. I have this little kit of jump rings that I got on Amazon. It's from Panda Hall. These are really nice heavy gauge jump rings. So um, you can find these. Just look for a jump ring kit. Maybe I'll uh, put the link down um, if I can find it on my Amazon where I bought it. These are really nice jump rings. They close nicely. They're cut nicely. They're heavy gauge. I really like these. So I'm going to grab like a four millimeter jump ring, I think. And I'm going to make sure that the opening of the jump ring I made the tassel on is towards the top still. I don't want my threads to fall through it at all, which it's closed tightly. They shouldn't, but still. Then I'm just going to open this four millimeter here um, jump ring and I'm going to slide it onto this jump ring and this component in the middle here. And then I'm just going to close that four millimeter jump ring. Oops. Oops. Jeez Louise, Gina. There we go. Okay. And that just ensures that it lays nicely. Um, otherwise, this jump ring would be kind of sideways and I don't okay, want it to Okay, now that be. our tassel is complete, we are going to make some dangles to go on the other four loops here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some little wire wrap dangles like this with the bigger pieces of lapis that came in the kit and also the ball head pins that came in. Now these head pins are a little bit lightweight so we want to do a closed wire wrap like this one. So you can see that this is completely closed. You can't open this loop. It's wrapped. So what we're going to do is we are going to grab one of the bigger pieces of lapis and slide it on one of these head pins. Then we're going to grab a round nose pliers and we're going to place the round nose pliers right on top of that piece of lapis just a little ways down the pliers because that's what's going to judge how big your loop is going to be and we don't want it to be huge. Then we are going to take that piece of wire and bend it over the back part of the plier here. Then we're going to take our wrist and just turn it into that bend just like this. Then we're going to take this wire and bend it over the top of the plier and Turn your wrist and bring the wire underneath the plier. Just like this. Now you have a loop that looks like this. Then you are going to grab your chain nose pliers and you will begin to turn this 
piece of wire around the wire between the bead and the loop. I'm going to switch hands because it's difficult for me to do that with my left hand. I'm going to grab my flat nose pliers and I am just going to begin to turn this wire around the wire in the middle here. And I'm just going to turn it a few times until my bead feels nice and secure in there. A couple nice little turns like this. And this is what that should look like. Now I have this extra piece of wire here, so I'm going to get my um, cutters and get really close in there. Cut that down and then get my chain nose and just gently squeeze that down. Now they want to move all over the place. So try to hold the bottom of the bead where the ball is and just squeeze it in the best you can like that and now it's not pokey anymore make four of those and we'll be back okay after you've made your four beads then you want to cut two pieces of chain five links long leave the last link open after you've opened it to take it off the main part of the chain and just slide your bead onto that link and then close the link again. Do that with two beads. So you should have two of them that look like this. Let me get back. And then you'll have two like this. We're going to use six millimeter um, jump rings here. And I'm just going to open four jump rings and slide one on each of these components I have just made. So for the chain, we'll slide it on the last piece of chain. And then the ones with the chain are going to go right next to the tassel on either side. Let me open this a little more. So open your jump ring from side to side. Never pull it open. With these heavy gauge, it's hard to pull it open anyway, but don't do that. Just twist it and then put it on your component and then twist it back. Make sure you close it tightly by sh shaking it a little bit, getting it close. You should feel it kind of engage with itself. Is that closed? Yeah. Okay. And that's what that looks like. And then I will put this one on this side. But first of all, let's go ahead and put, open up another jump ring. So I'm holding it like this, grab the other side, twist it open, just like that. And then I'm going to slide it on one of my beads that does not have the chain on it and put it on the end loop. And then I'm just going to close it. Make sure you get them closed nice and tight. And that is what your component should look like so far, right there. So go ahead and do the other side and we'll be back. Okay, so this is what you should have now. All of your little dangles on there. And now we're going to make some looped beads to make a looped top of the necklace here. So in my last video, I showed you how to use one-step looper. It was the bigger one-step looper. This time I'm going to show you how to use the smaller looper. But first, we are just going to make one with our round pliers for those who do not have a looper. These are what the beads are going to look like that we're going to make. What we're going to do is we're going to use a head pin. We're going to slide the bead onto the head pin and then we're just going to bend the head pin over the top of the bead just like that. And then we're going to take our wire cutters and we're going to cut this down about a fourth of an inch long. So let me switch this around. So I'm just going to cut this quarter of an inch right here. And then I am going to grab my round nose pliers, reach a little closer, and I'm going to go right to the end of this wire here, right at the very end, and I'm going to place it just a little ways down my um, 
pliers so that I get about the right size loop that I want. And then I'm just going to start to turn. Once I get as far as I can turn, I'm going to reposition my wrist and then just continue turning again. Until I have a loop. Just like this. This is the 1.5 millimeter loop. It's actually a little bit smaller than the loops on this particular eye pin. However, it's going to work just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, place a bead onto my eye pin. I am going to place this eye pin underneath the little peg right here and on top of these two little like levers that are stretched out and through this little hole right here. So just like this. Let me get you close so you can see. Now you can see just how it's positioned underneath the peg on top of these two little, they look like little levers sticking up or something, and then through the hole in the back here. I'm not going to put it, my bead really tight against there because I don't want to crush my bead. And then all I'm going to do is squeeze. So I'm just going to squeeze the handles now. Hold on to my bead. And then you can see I have a loop. I like to hold it and then bend my loop back a little so I get a nice shape. Now these particular ones like to hold this in so you have to squeeze the handle so that you can lift it out. And then you can close your loop. Now this loop, like I said, is a little bit smaller than that loop. So all I've been doing is just kind of straightening, straightening them out with my round nose pliers, which is kind of stupid. I should just make them with my round nose pliers, but um, I figure it doesn't have to be totally exact, so I'm okay with this. And I'm just going to make a whole bunch of them, just like this. And what I could do if I wanted it to be exactly the same, if you're really picky about it and you're really worried about it, just cut the loop that's already on there because this is a long one. So I can cut that loop off and then I can place this into my one-step looper right at the very end here. I don't have to go through the loop because I'm making the end. So I'm just placing it just like this and then bringing the wire back so I have a nice little loop like that. And then I can put my bead on and do the other side. And then they'll be exactly the same on either side if you're really, really worried about that. Or you can just use small pieces of wire too. I showed how to use the bigger looper with wire on my last bead box tutorial. There's, you'll find it on this channel if you are really interested in learning more about it. Now I've placed it in like I showed you previously and I'm just going to turn it. And now I've got one the same on either side and all I have to do is close that little loop. And Sometimes you just want to take your pliers and straighten it so they're exactly the same on either side. Just like that. And then you just want to go through and make sure they're all closed and then we'll come back and we will put them on the necklace. You can also do your metal beads the same way. If you'd like to, you can pick up a 11 on either side. Like this. I think I'll do that. Maybe that'll give a little bit more interest. Like this. And then make a loop either with your round nose pliers or with your looper. Just position it right next to that little 11 ohm. Maybe. Maybe that's not a good idea. There we go. And there you have it. So I'm going to make mm, as many of these as I have into loops also, and as many as I have left of the 
lapis and I will let you know exactly because a couple of my lapis were defective so I will let you know exactly how many I use. Okay, once you have several of these made, then you're just going to, I'm using some 8 millimeter jump rings here of the heavy gauge like I showed you earlier and I'm just going to open them and just start putting my loops on in whatever order you would like to put them on. Just make sure they're symmetrical. Well, they don't even have to be, but I'm going to make sure that my right side matches my left side, of course. So I'm just going to twist a jump ring open. I'm going to pick up a lapis and then I'm going to put it on to the component and I'm going to close it. And actually close it. <laughs> I didn't actually close it. There we go. Nope, still didn't close it. Okay, I think I got it closed now. You can use um, a variation in sizes of jump rings too if you'd like just to make it look a little different. Maybe I'll even use a couple a little bit bigger jump rings. And so I've got this um, lapis piece on. Then I'm going to open a big one, put it on this side of the lapis piece, and pick up one of my metal ones. Slide it on and close it. And then probably go ahead and put another metal one or big one on this side of the metal bead. And then put on a lapis and close it. And then I'm just going to continue doing that and I'll do this side to match until I have it long enough to actually make a necklace. If, however, we do not have quite enough to make it all the way around and make a nice size necklace, we can always add a little chain on the end too. So I'm going to go ahead and make mine and then show you exactly what I came out okay, with. Okay, and here is the finished piece. I'm going to show you exactly what I used and I also made a pair of earrings just with a few more of the links. So I used a metal bead, a large jump ring and um, I put a head pin, one of the ball head pins on the bottom so that I didn't have an extra loop on two of the lapis pieces and then just put an ear wire on it. So that's what those look like. And then the sides of the necklace, I used 12 lapis pieces all together, and I used six of the metal beads. And I just made the loops on either side like I showed you, and then I got out some large jump rings. And so I got 10 millimeter and 8 millimeter jump rings is what I did. And I just did a pattern for myself that I repeated. I started with an 8 millimeter, then a lapis piece, a 10 millimeter jump ring, a metal bead, a 10 millimeter jump ring, a lapis, and then a 8 millimeter jump ring, a lapis, and then a 10 millimeter, and just repeated that. So you can make any pattern that you'd like, but that's what I did. And it turned out to be about a 20 inch necklace, including the middle piece here, and it hangs just right on the neck, and it's quite pretty. And let's back off again so you can see the dangles here, and that's what that looks like. Now let's move on to something else. Okay, so for this pendant, I decided I did not like the bale that was on it. So these are just pinch bales, so all you have to do is just open it up and pull it off. It's kind of flimsy and it's not quite as pretty as this one. This one I'm going to put on. It's the same type of bale. It just has a little rhinestone in front. And I'm going to see if I can slide this one on the pendant, just to give it a little bit fancier look, just because I like it better. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place my straight nose pliers in here and just kind of pry this open just very gently, just like that. And that's how you'll take off the one that's on there too. Just open it gently. 
sometimes getting it lined up, especially on something that is drilled like this, is a little difficult. So I'm going to see if I can get it on here. Okay. Now, once I have it lined up with the holes, I can just pinch it shut like this. While I turn the bead over, I opened it up, turn the bead, the bail the pendant over and put the bail back on to see if it looks a little better and it looks a little better. I just don't like being able to see the hole through it but really the other side the hole is drilled bigger so on this side it's not too bad and you're going to see somewhat because it's going to move in that hole that's just the way it's designed. So I think that's a little bit better. And then I'm going to figure out some way I want to string this. I have these big pieces of lapis from my own collection. I might use some of those. Um, there really wasn't enough net lapis after I used my other, made my other necklace um, to do this pendant with. So I don't know that I will. I might just string some, I might just string some crystals and basically with some of these bead caps I may use some of them and I may use some five millimeter crystals that I have some Swarovski I have some of these gemstones I'm just going to cut myself a piece of beading wire and get a couple crimp tubes out and I'm going to go ahead and string a necklace and um, once I get my design pretty much the way I like it, I'll show you exactly how I put it on there and then show you how I crimp it off. Okay, so I decided to show you. I am going to, I put my beading wire on the bale and I am going to just make my design out from the center here. And what I think I'm going to do first is I'm going to drop on either side some of these little bead caps down. These are tiny bead caps. Then I'm going to use a crystal and see how this lines up here. So I'll put a crystal on here. I've got some I've got some saucer shaped crystals in here too. I might use those too. I don't know. But then I'm going to do both sides the same way. See if I need to put some seed beads or anything underneath that center to give it something to set on. So let's see how the middle will work. Actually, yeah, maybe I'll have to put some seed beads in there. So I've got this side strung with a bead cap and a crystal. I'm going to pick up three 11 o seed beads. Let's see, maybe four. Four would be better because the top of that bale is a little wide. So I'm going to put four seed beads on here. Yeah, and that will give something for the bale to slide on. Let me show you what I got. So now I have a bead cap and a crystal on this side. Four 11 o seed beads. They are Toho nickel plate. They blend in really well with the metal tone of this. And then I'm just going to put on a bead cap and a crystal. And this is a jar, just kind of a mixed crystal, so I have to make sure I have the right sizes and make it symmetrical. And then I am going to drop down a bead cap. Now, this is going to make this a little bit more fancy, a little bit um, sparkly and not quite so casual. Lapis, you can dress it up or down. It's that color that you can just kind of... You can make it fancy or you can make it really southwestern or really casual, really like blue genie, however you want to do it. Then I'm going to drop one of these, I'm going to drop another bead cap the other direction. And I am going to put on a piece of the lapis I have myself. Um, such big beads, I don't know. We're going to see how this turns out. If I don't like it, I'll just do it all in crystal, but maybe this will work out okay. And you can use anything you have in your stash. You could use pearls with it. You could use 
the lapis that came. Actually, that doesn't look too horribly bad. So I'm just going to continue working from the center out. So whatever I do to this side, I'll do to this side and vice versa until I get to the length I want. Then I will use a little clip to clip off one side and I will crimp and put a clasp on. And I'll come back to show you that. And here's the way I finished it. I just went ahead and put some of the saucer. I didn't use my um, bicone crystals. I used the saucer. Um, clear quartz beads and so these are my own beads these are my own lapis beads too and I just graduated them down in size the only thing I don't like about it I'm not in love with this necklace is because the pendant is much lighter than the lapis that I have on here it's I'm sure dyed and it's just not quite as nice as these lapis but it is what it is and I made it, so I'm going to just go ahead and finish it for you. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and clasped this end. I put a four millimeter uh, metal bead, and then I put on one of my own clasps, because the clasps that came in this box I find difficult to use on a bigger piece like this. So I will use it on a bracelet or something. So on this side, I've done the same thing. I've put a metal bead but I need another one of my bead caps because I ended this with a bead cap so let's see if I have one out here so I put bead caps back to back on these as you can see I used the bead caps in the box and I just put them back to back and now I'm going to drop on my four millimeter metal bead which is also for my sash but I just thought it would make a nice ending because the, it has a big enough hole that it will slide up over the crimp beads and kind of make a nice look. So I'm just dropping on my crimp bead, putting on my clasp, going back through the crimp bead, and then I will slide through a couple of beads on this side also. Now, there's you can cut it right off at the crimp bead if you want. But I always slide back through simply because when you cut it off, I don't care what anyone says, it's pokey. And it always ends up being pokey right on the back of someone's neck and it drives them nuts. So I always do slide through a bead. You don't necessarily have to, but I do. And it also keeps things a little bit more secure. So that's what I've done. I've slid through this bead and then I'm just going to take my crimp tool, my regular size, and I'm going to make sure that this side is about the same as that side as far as my loop through my crimp bead is concerned. I'm going to take the second divot in my crimping tool and I'm going to place it on my crimp bead, trying to keep these wires kind of parallel, and squeeze. And now I have if I can turn it, a V-fold right there. So you can see from using that second divot, it's got a nice fold in the center. Then I'm going to place it with the fold in the center and the two tubes that were created on either side touching the tool. And then I'm going to squeeze again. And now I've got a nice crimp. And then I can just cut this wire off real close to this bead. And now my necklace is finished. Has a nice finish. So, like I said, I'm not totally in love with this necklace, but it, it is pretty and it'll be fine. But just the variation in the lapis is just a little bit obvious, but that's okay. Anyway, that is what I made and mostly with my own beads and with the bead caps and the um, pendant, of course. So you can do anything you'd like sliding on this pendant. It, it's nice to have the hint of the little bead caps and the um, seed beads in the middle to have a slider. But other than that, just put whatever you want on there and make a nice little necklace. And here are our lovely little projects we made in this video. And make sure you stay tuned. The next video I release will be part two, and I will show you how to make your bracelet. And that one, let me see if I can find it. 
this is the bracelet bracelet we will make in the next video. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this one. Have a lovely night and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.